Hello lovely people, it's Kate from The Fold Line. So I'm out and about, which can only mean one thing, so the trends is back for autumn. This is where I go into all the high street shops, look at what is going to be in trend, scuttle home and find some patterns so that you guys can sew this season's best looks. So I'm in Covent Garden, um, as you can see, if I do a little spin, um, ready to go and look at everything. I'm actually excited because I feel like it's been very warm and the shops have had summer stuff in for ages so I'm hoping there will now be more wintry things and yes I will take you with me. Right, so I've been into a few shops. I'm always I'm standing with all these lovely flowers behind me because Covent Garden used to, at one time ages ago, used to be a flower market. They always have really, really beautiful planting. Um, so I've been into a couple of shops. I would say that quite a lot of the winter stuff is only just arriving, even though we're at the end of September. And I think that's because it's been so warm. Um, I've got quite a few things I've noticed. Not very much print lots and lots of sort of tonal um, colours so camels, greys, blacks, deep um, greens, um, what else have I noticed? It's not a huge amount of print, it's all quite plain. Um, I'm thinking, now I've done a couple of shops, actually there's going to be loads of stuff that you can either pull from your wardrobe or pull from your pattern stash and make for the season so I've got quite a few ideas but yeah definitely quite subdued I think like with everything the economy affects what comes into the shops and it's definitely feeling quite pared back this season so far So I've just gone to a few shops on Floral Street which are much more independent. I will say that there's definitely a bit more colour and print in these shops but generally the tonal colour is definitely subdued. Um, lots of lovely layering pieces, lots of really great knitwear actually that seems to be a common theme. So I will keep looking. I'm going to go and look in some of the high street shops now and take you with me. So last stop, I'm now, this is not um, clothing related, I'm in Neil's yard, which I always love, it's always really fun and bright. I need a coffee and there's, they're taking scaffolding down, so I'm going to grab coffee and then I'm going to head home and start my research. Hello, so I'm back from town, I've done my homework, what I've now decided is there's so much to talk about, I'm going to split it into two um, different videos, I hope that's okay. So. Half will come out this week and half will come out next week. I just feel like I can do better in two kind of videos. I think it feels better for me. So before I get onto actual patterns, I'm gonna talk about general things that I thought might be useful for you to know. Colors, what sort of fabrics are out there, um, accessories, that sort of thing. So I hope that's useful. It gives you sort of broader spectrum and then we'll move in to the actual patterns. So let's start with colour. I'll show you um, the kind of colour chart from what I saw looking around. You can see definitely really muted, not very much in the print section. So there's lots of blacks, lots of greys, this really lovely sort of wine burgundy colour. Then there is cream. This sort of spans into two different, or th maybe three different categories. There's your straight up cream. There was also a really lovely sort of yellowy buttery colour which was in a lot of shops and also on the high street. And this kind of led into kind of a very pale sort of taupe and lots of shades within that all the way through to camel of which there was also a lot of. Last but not least was this really gorgeous jewelry green in lots of different shops I saw this, all kind of, I guess all forms of kind of darkish green, there were loads of those. So I actually think it's a really lovely colour palette to play with and I think you can mix and match all of these and they'll all intersperse with things that you have in your wardrobe already or things that you're planning to make. 
So fabric, leather. Leather was a really big trend this season everywhere. Kind of boxy jackets, skirts, um, shirts. So if you are thinking that you really want to be bang on trend, leather is definitely something that you should have a look at. Um, in terms of print, there was very little print around, which I was quite surprised about actually, I have to say. I looked and looked and looked. The only prints that there were were these ones that I'm showing you here, and I call them sort of moody florals, mostly on a dark background, kind of a black or a very dark grey. And um, they were all sort of, all, quite a lot of them actually had sort of purpley, deep purpley sort of hues. Um, they felt sort of very rich and luxurious, but those were the sort of only prints that I found when I was looking for things. Um, next up, we've got fabric again, another type of fabric. Sheer fabric was everywhere, and I thought this was a really nice and fun way of adding a nod to something that's very trend-based, but without kind of showing loads of flesh. So I put, I can, you can see here that they're actually. Um, I tried to put a kind of range of different types of garments on there so you can see how it is, how they're kind of made in different ways and actually really spans loads of different garments. So the, the and other stories blouse, for example, actually it is sheer, but it's it's not showing very much skin, whereas the mango one feels very kind of floaty and summery. Um, this sort of, the ASOS and the M&S ones particularly, these, this was everywhere, where it was basically one item with a um, unsheer, obviously something to kind of keep your modesty, but, but showing the straps and having a sheer item over the top. So if you wanted to do something really simple, actually two strap tops or a strap top with a long sleeve top made in a sheer fabric would definitely be pretty much bang on. So another thing that was I noticed a lot of was outerwear seemed to get the most kind of fun and frivolousness which I was quite excited about and check seemed to be really big obviously you know it's winter and there's lots of or usually lots of tweeds around but these big dramatic checks were in lots of shops and I thought this was actually quite a fun way of injecting a bit of colour into your wardrobe. So other things if you're thinking about buying some accessories or pieces for your wardrobe cowboy boots very much in um also riding boots sort of those flat riding boots black sort of you know the ones that you'd obviously wear on a horse saw quite a lot of those in different shops um handbags tended to be big sort of statement clutches that seemed to be a really big feature and the other thing that i was quite interested by was there was a lot of statement jewelry so these big sculpture i'll show you a picture big sculptural necklaces um, and also really big statement um, stud earrings so they were almost like a kind of piece of sculpture in your ear there were quite a lot of that sort of style around so I think it's sort of wearing quite simple garments but with like something in like a piece of interest that adds the kind of wow factor so we're going to start with outerwear and with the outerwear I'm going to start with bomber jackets. These were in all the shops in lots of different formats. I think they're such a useful item for your wardrobe. The thing that I really like about them is that you can wear them as a jacket but you can also wear them as a like a kind of jumper. So there were also quite a few that I saw that were made in a sweatshirting or a knit that you would wear them less as a kind of jacket and more as a kind of cardigan. So I've got two really fantastic patterns for you and apologies I do keep looking at my laptop because there are so many patterns I'm going to get very very confused. So I picked two patterns for these they're actually quite similar but they have slightly different details that I thought might be of interest and might sway you either way. So the first one is a Sport Lux Bomber from the Makers Atelier and the second one is the um, TPC4 Bomber from Trend Patterns. The thing that I really liked about the Makers Atelier one is there is an option to have buttons. This felt really nice and makes it feel slightly more of a cardigan rather than a, if you wanted to go down that route rather than the jacket. Um, there is also an option to zip it up as well so you can pick between the two. The trend patterns one I thought was really great because it's slightly oversized and you will probably have noticed in the picture that quite a lot of them, there were quite a few big sort of oversized um, 
bombers and this one would definitely work you might want to size up um, with it and I also really like the little zip on your chest detail I thought that was a really nice um, kind of detail as well that there wasn't in the makers atelier so those are your two bomber jacket patterns next up we've got the boxy pea coat I loved this I thought there were lots of these around again you can see here in a really nice span of colors so pick whatever color you want you could also make this in a kind of statement check as well but crucially they were quite oversized double breasted and I really thought this is something that you could wear season on season so I've got two patterns for these. Now, I think with both of these patterns, you will want to size up one or two sizes, depending on how boxy and big you want to make it. And you might need to make them ever so slightly longer. So the first pattern that I've got is the Cortland Trench Coat from Grainline Studio. This is really lovely little cropped sort of trench, but it's got all the details that you would expect from a pea coat with a double breast Kind of closure this feels quite loose and relaxed um, anyway so it's definitely worth all of these to make a toile and make sure that you've kind of got the kind of fit right the other one is a McCall's pattern it's the 7876 um, this one feels a little bit more fitted but it has less of the trench details in it so this one is also uh, double breasted so this one feels quite close so either of those I think would work really well if you wanted to make yourself a really nice big boxy oversized pea coat. Next we've got a very classic coat the sort of tie front slightly tailored coat it's such a great shape. It's something that never goes out of style and they were very much around. And again, you can see them in all these lovely kind of autumnal colors. So I've got two fantastic patterns to pick from. The first one is the Terry Coat from Barra Studios. Um, I will say that I didn't plan for them to be in exactly the in very similar colors, but it just ended up being that way. So the Terry Coat from Barra Studios, this feels really nice and cozy. This one almost feels a little bit in between a cardigan and a coat. Um, it, the, this, it's slightly less structured. Um, so this would be a good one if you're in slightly more in the beginner camp. The Ormond Coat from Starlark is another option. I love this, I think it's beautiful. Um, it's got a really nice big wide statement tie as well at the front and this one has got slightly more of the traditional tailoring details in it. You can see it's definitely slightly more structured so if you're looking for something kind of a bit more tailored then this is definitely the one to go and have a look at. So moving on to dresses, you will see the simple dress is what I've called it. There were loads of these around in loads of different formats so obviously these are knit dresses um, some of them with the moody kind of, you can see with that sort of dark floral and most, uh, most of them actually were plain. I think this is a very versatile item for your wardrobe and I think it's something that you could whip out um, over and over again. So you can make them in a couple of colours quite easy. There were also a few like the Cezanne one you can see here with a tie around the waist. So I've got three options for you. If you like the really tight, want to keep it really nice and tight, then the Allison dress from Vicky Sews felt really close. It's got this lovely detail as well to have a really long sleeves with that little um, hole in it for your thumb. Um, lovely nice, neck, neck, I really like the neckline shape on this one as well. But this one feels absolutely closest to the things on the high street. If you wanted something that kind of it feels quite tight but it's got that tie detail at the waist. I thought the Estelle dress from So Over it was a really nice option. It's got all of the features of that kind of very simple cut but it has just a little bit of detail around the waist if you're looking for something that's less of a block. If you wanted something that feels a little um, a little less fitted, slightly looser, but you want to get the feel of that kind of long, um, simple dress. The ruby dress from Fiber Mood is a really great option. You can see that it's got slits up the side and the cut of it is just a little bit more relaxed. So I think either of those three, or any of those three, sorry, would work really well and pretty much be very much on trend. So next up on the dress front, we've got the shirt dress. So I was quite surprised to see this because everything's quite, um, everything felt, felt very plain without a lot of detail, but the shirt dress definitely was in there in a few of the shops. 
um, which I was really happy to see actually because I think it's a really useful item for your wardrobe. It's nice if you're not sure what you want to wear that day. I just think popping a shirt dress on, it never goes out of style. So I picked three different options. Um, the first one I've got is the loose shirt dress from Barra Studios. I put this one in because it feels slightly less relaxed, slightly less structured than a traditional shirt dress with the collar. And the nice detail about this one is that it has a drawstring waist, so you can cinch it in at the waist, which felt quite similar to the ones on the high street. If you're looking for something that is very much traditional shirt dress, then I thought the Nicole dress from Sew Over It, it's your classic, classic shirt dress um, with all the lovely details on the collar, a bit more of an involved make this one, but again, an absolute classic. If you're looking for something sort of in between the two, I thought the Celia dress from the Modern Sewing Company was a really good option. It's got the tie at the waist, it's got a, a much simpler collar construction, but it feels closer to the to a kind of classic shirt dress potentially than the Lou one. So I just thought any one of those three would definitely tick the box of a very great shirt dress. So I'm now going to finish. Um, come back next week for tops and bottoms. So we've got shirts, um, we've got skirts, we've got trousers, we've got all of that good stuff. So come back next week and I will continue with the Magna Carta that is So The Trends this year.